Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. Beautiful morning it is. This is Linda Lewis with Lewis Armstrong Family Services and Ralph Gavin. Right here, all the way live, New Orleans Talk Network. Uh, please download our app, New Orleans Talk Network. We're here on this beautiful morning. It's kind of wet. We got some wet sunshine out there, but I'm enjoying every moment of it. It is a beautiful morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I am so glad, and I am definitely happy to be in it. Uh, we have some friends and relatives that you know that uh, have passed, and uh, we miss them, but we know that uh, it's not our way, it is His way. Again, this is Linda Lewis, and I'm all the way live right here at New Orleans Talk Network on the Best Bank, the West Bank. What you say about that, Ron? Well, I know you like it. You got to love it. You got to <laughs> love it. You're here. And we have a, a very a wonderful show. I know you're not lost for words. I know you, you really uh, have a lot of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. And we're right here. Uh, and you can call us at 504-341-8255. Again, the number is 504-341-8255. We have a lot of things to say and to share with you. I'm sure you have some also. So please don't be shy. Don't shy away from the radio. We can't see your face but uh we're here in the place and we're here waiting for you to call us if you like 504-341-8255 mr gavin yes um today i would just like to retouch upon something i had previously covered a topic i previously covered that perhaps um black folks have uh inadvertently forgotten. Uh, sometimes we have uh, selective amnesia because we get caught up in the uh, foolishness of entertainment. So uh, I'm saying that to say this. I'm going to re-cover uh, uh, the information about the Tuskegee syphilis study, which is also called, called the uh, Tuskegee experiment. Now, uh, the Tuskegee experiment, it was established from 1932 to 1972. The U.S. government sponsored the nation's longest running public health experiment note the word experiment in and around tuskegee alabama under the financial constraints imposed by the great depression the u.s public health service discontinued a successful program to document and to treat syphilis in a rural african-american population and replace it with a study of the effects of untreated late stage latent syphilis in African American men. Uh, the study was conducted with the cooperation of the Tuskegee Institute and the Public Health Department, the U.S. Public Health Department of Macon County, Alabama, but without the consent of the participants. They didn't even tell the people they were being experimented on. They were enticed with food and free transportation. 
to go to these scientific experiment facilities. <laughs> hmm? And they thought they were being treated. It ended only after a media reporter exposed it and uh, prompted a national outcry. Controversy stemming from the experiment, now known as the Tuskegee Syphilis Study, prompted major reforms in medical research. And uh, Bill Clinton in 1997 issued a public apology to the participants. Mm. Now, the key word here is unwittingly. Think about that. Unwittingly simply means not knowing. Mm. Huh? So how diabolical is that? And even the doctors that attempted to treat some of these victims after going into these different stages, after exposing their wives and their children and their unborn fetuses, once they got to the hospital for t facilities, they knew about the experiment going on. They told the people, hmm. you all right. <laughs> so they gave them a placebo. A placebo is just a make-believe medicine. Huh? They gave them an aspirin. Or they gave them some other type of uh, non-effective medication. How diabolical is that? And some of the treatments were uh, made uh, in comparison to the Nuremberg experiments in which the Germans experimented on human beings, huh? on the Nazi Germany. That was the equivalent of the Tuskegee experiment. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. That's awesome. So, um, And we have a nerve to talk about what? Huh? Radical Islam? <laughs> huh? 40 years, eight presidents, including the one you got in your living room hanging on the wall next to Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, John F. Kennedy. He knew about it. Huh? He was in office in 1960. Yeah, that's 12 years before it ended. See, but ain't nobody talking about that. No, they're not going to do that? No. Not at all. Yeah, John Kennedy knew about the Tuskegee study, and plus he was a whole manga. Ain't nobody talking about that. Mm -hmm. Put him on your wall in your living room. huh? Wow. And what we worried about? Who that said he gonna beat them saints? That's it. Huh? Nothing else. The saints, the saints, the move saints. Yes, Lord. That's all. That's all. How many houses Tom Benson uh, rebuilt in the night? Well, <laughs> how Z. many poor uh, black folks he helped in New Orleans? Z. Huh? How Z. many houses they got going up for auction today? Z. Huh? A lot of houses. That's blighted. <laughs> Over 150 untouched. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got us. Oh, yeah. Boy. Oh, yes. In 1997, President Bill Clinton stated, the United States did something profoundly and morally and clearly and racistly wrong. Huh? That came out of his mouth. Clinton apologized to the victims of the Tuskegee study and experiment. Now, it was exposed by uh, a whistleblower that worked for the uh, public health department. In 1972, his name was Peter Buxton, B-U-X-T-U-N, not T-O-N. If you want to look him up, I can't make this up. I'm not that good. Huh? He was the whistleblower that exposed this information. 
And uh, Buxton testified on July 25th, 1972. And this is what he said. I felt what was being done was very close to an institutional form of murder. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. This is something condoned by your U.S. government for 40 years. And the man couldn't take it anymore, and he wasn't black. Hello. Mm. So Buxton leaked the information to a Washington uh, Star newspaper reporter by the name of Gene Heller, J-E-A-N-H-E-L-L-E-R. And it was investigated by Edward Kennedy and brought before Congress, who called for a congressional hearing. Mm. See, these are the things we don't go into detail about. Huh? We can go into George Washington, uh, you know, chopping down a cherry tree, huh? saying, I cannot tell a lie. Wow. And he was the largest slave owner in the country at the <laughs> time. Yeah. We can go along with Abraham Lincoln, supposed to emancipate and free the slaves. And he's hit the real truth was, he said, I'd rather not do this. But I got to do it through this cut here. <laughs> because economics is going down. Oh, yeah. Huh? Wasn't about people, what about a dollar? all about it you see so i just wanted to share this bit of information if you want to look up peter buxton b-u-x-t-u-n a former employee of the united states public health services who exposed this syphilis thing and you know what they called it what they told the black sharecroppers hmm. huh they said, uh, oh you just got bad blood <laughs> huh? Yes, Lord. Yeah, you can nickname it if you want to. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's what they do. So, um, my people, my listening audience, I just wanted to put that on your mind so you can do a little in-depth research. Mm. And also, let me add this to the uh, the oration of my research. <laughs> You had a black nurse named Eunice Rivers. Eunice Rivers. Eunice Rivers. Mm -hmm. She was very instrumental in being the Pied per Piper who lured the black sharecroppers and farmers into the churches in collaboration with the black pastors. Yeah. And she worked for public health for over 40 years. How diabolical is that? Huh? See, Jesus may be alive and well, but you got Judas and Judet. Huh? They're still living too. <laughs> mm. Talk to me. Shut up, Ralph. You talk too much. You know, you don't. We need this information. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, like uh, you had mentioned, uh, Albert Pike. Oh, yeah. And what did you say he was? He's looming. His statue is standing, looming in Judiciary Square in Washington, D.C., alongside or in the same vicinity of Martin Luther King's statue and Harry and Tubman's statue, the first and only Confederate Brigadier General, I'm going to look at you people, yeah, who was pardoned by President Andrew Johnson for treason. You know any black folks got, any, got pardoned for treason? Talk to me. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. So these are the things. We have the bloodiest hands on the planet. Yes. And we're supposed to be setting a moral standard for the world. Yeah. How hypocritical is that? And guess where else he is? Yes. On Jefferson Davis Parkway in New Orleans. Girl, go ahead. Hey, I noticed it yesterday. Albert Pike. 
That's right. Wow. And my grand, my great granddaughter brought it to my attention uh-huh. because she knew it was the removal of who? Mm-hmm. Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis. So I said, well, who is there? And I said, Albert Pike. Albert Pike. And nobody in New Orleans knew about this. A boss there, and I'm going to definitely, I'm going to a meeting next week. I'm going to definitely, well, before I go to the meeting, I'm going to call and let them know. But they did say it was the beginning of the removals. Uh You know, but Pike, I think, is a little bit worse than Jefferson. I mean, Worse, hey, a little bit worse. A little bit worse, but he wrote the Ku Klux Klan uh, terrorist handbook. Yes, for the Ku His Klux Klan is on Jefferson. Oh, David how com- covert and Tulane Avenue. Girl, go ahead. I didn't know that. Guess what? A lot of people don't know. A lot of black they, people don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but we need to get it out here. Yes. And we're getting it out here now. And I want you to go on Tulane Avenue and Jefferson Davis Parkway. Mm -hmm. You will see the Pike bus. Wow. His bus is right there. I mean, as big as Cuff. Mm -hmm. But not that big. Concentrating on. Yeah. Try to put him in a little tuck away area. Yeah. Oh, baby. Hey. We got to move on that one. Well, Edmund Pettus Bridge is still named Edmund Pettus okay. Bridge. All right. Huh? That's right. How many dogs That's and black right. folks got beat down That's on right. Edmund Pettus Bridge? Ain't nobody changed Albert that. Albert Pike, I thought about you. I wanted to call you, but I was, you know, in, in what doing you a lot say? of other things I had to do at the moment. But I did, will not forget, and I will bring that up. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure most people do not know. Yeah. The Pike Man. Uh-huh. The Pike Man. Yeah. Is right in New Orleans, right there with his friend, was his friend, well, is his friend, Uh Jefferson Davis. And they removed his friend, but they didn't remove him. Mm -hmm. So we got to go down the line. You got to just walk up and down Jefferson Davis and see who else is on on Jefferson Davis. Baby, when you go to tearing things down, you see like Bourbon Street? Yes. You got to look into that royal family. Named Bourbon, mm-hmm. huh? How mm-hmm. diabolical it was! Mm-hmm. They don't talk about Madame La Lure, mm-hmm. huh? Who tortured innocent slaves in her attic for amusement, making uh, creatures out of the uh, human monsters out of their body, attaching made one uh, slave look like a crab, mm-hmm. huh? Wow castrated uh, other uh, uh, male slaves and done all kind of diabolical tortures in her attic. Mm. And they had a little fire. Yeah. Mm. At Dolphin, I think the building is located on Dolphin Street and uh, maybe Iberville or something like that. A little fire? And the fire department came to put out the fire. Mm-hmm. This how the public's attention was brought to her torturous, satanic, demonic, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Demeanor. Con- con- the way she conducted these torturous, murderous yes. things. Mm-hmm. So anyway, when they went up to the attic, they seen all these slaves in cages and laid out on on uh, uh, operating uh, uh, beds and all this other kind in monstrosities. This was her amusement. A beautiful woman, a woman of social class, and nothing but a demon inside of her. Mm. Madame La Lure. Yeah, you hear about it. They, they take you on the La Lure tour oh. when you go in the French Quarter. Wow. Huh? Yeah. The little slave girl, I had a little slave girl, was t- so tired of being beaten and tortured, she actually jumped over the balcony and committed suicide. Wow. And they say this child's spirit walks around this building today. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we, when we start talking about diabolical things, huh? We ain't seen nothing yet. You got Jeffrey Amherst, huh? They name in a university after him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. they, 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 that's the one gave the syphilis, uh, I mean, uh, uh, smallpox to the blankets, mm-hmm. to the Indians in the French uh, Indian War. And when he would take the, uh, uh, and attack an innocent tribe after the hunting scouts, the male Indians were going out to hunt for food. He <laughs> murdered men, women, children, and the elderly. And he used mastiff. You ever seen a mastiff dog? 
That's about twice the size no. of a normal Rottweiler. Huh? I am not. <laughs> Look up Mastiff. M-A-S-T-I-F-F. -F. Look up the breed of that dog. Look like a little Shetland pony. That's how big this dog is. <laughs> and you know what uh, Jeffrey Amherst said? When they, somebody asked him why uh, you brought these dogs to attack these people, Jeffrey Amherst said, I'm sorry, I didn't bring enough. Huh? <laughs> Watching them eat and devour babies. Oh, baby, and we have the nerve to call somebody radical terrorist. The Ku Klux Klan still exists. Ain't nobody talking about that. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And now they're not wearing the white robes. They got on a, 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 a uniform, a blue uniform, mm -hmm. and a badge and a gun. So they're not the Ku Klux Klan, they're the Blue Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. <laughs> See, nobody's talking about Kendrick, uh, Kendrick Johnson. The little boy uh, was murdered by these two white boys because he was going with a white girl. One of the white boys' girlfriends. And their daddy was a law enforcement officer. Huh? Wow. And this didn't happen in 1817. This didn't happen in 1815. No. This happened almost two years ago. I might be wrong. Look it up. <laughs> That's what I want you to do. I want to stir up the curiosity in you. Even if I'm wrong, you can research it and find out the facts. Wow. See, it's not about uh, 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 black or white. It's about wrong or right. <laughs> huh? That's true. That's true. See? Because the day of tomorrow, we learn how to hate, folk, hate white folks like they hate us. This country will burn down by tomorrow. Ooh, really? But what we waiting for? Huh? I don't know. That first Saints preseason game. Huh? <laughs> that next second line on a That's Sunday. Right. That's right. Huh? Who that? Who we that? waiting for Mardi Gras. Who that? We waiting for Halloween, Who that? the most diabolical, satanic day on the earth. I'm scared. Huh? Yes. And they, they they putting up displays, advertisement displays in the stores today. That's right. They're huh? ready for it. They're Setting up. It. They're ready for it. And what we going to do? Go buy that candy. That's right. Go we're buy them pumpkins. Yes, they're ready for it, and we're ready for a little short break, and we will be back shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and shut up, Ralph. You talk too much. <laughs> I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue. For me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Join in on Mondays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. for Breaking the Silence with Dr. Patricia Fry. There are no limitations or boundaries. We talk about life. And guess what? That includes you. So download the app today, New Orleans Talk Network, and subscribe on YouTube. That's every Monday, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. New Orleans Talk Network, Breaking the Silence with Dr. Patricia Fry. Happy Merry Mondays. It's your girl, Mary J. I want you to tune in with me to Real Talk with Mary J on New Orleans Talk Network every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Then follow me to blogtalkradio.com slash Real Talk with Mary J at 10 p.m. It's going to be a Merry Monday every Monday at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You've just tuned in to New Orleans Talk Network. This is Jill Samuels with Faith That Works. Join us every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 12 noon on New Orleans Talk Network as we change the lives of people with the Word of God by equipping the body of Christ to evangelize the world while reconciling people back to God. Let us continue to carry the water to the desert because
Jesus is the living water. Stop this hauling water to the sea. Hello, this is Dr. Glenda E. Williams. This is Charles Stewart. Dr. Anthony Williams. And I want to encourage you to join Church Without Walls every Monday morning from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. And we want to encourage you to promote God's plan and not man's plan. Don't you dare me. Today, today is a beautiful day. We have the liquid sunshine out there. We at New Orleans Talk Network all the way live. Facebook us, or you can YouTube us, or you can definitely download our app, New Orleans Talk Network. This is Linda Lewis with Lewis Armstrong Family Services and Ralph Gavin. Hey, hey, hey! From Treme, what I say? We're gonna come back to you. This is our second half of our show, and we'll come back to you with our wonderful words of the day. Mr. Gavin? Yes. Um, get ready, get ready, get ready. The first, Louis Armstrong, huh? Family Services, New Orleans Talk Network, word of the day, is pariah. Pariah is spelled P-A-R-I-A-H. And uh, the meaning of pariah simply means a member of a low caste, C-A-S-T-E, of Southern India. Uh, the second meaning is one that is despised or rejected. And one of the quotes from uh, the meaning of pariah is as follows. The world has changed very much starting with the transformation of Donald Trump from uh, a desirable, from a desirable rich person to a pariah president. Wow. Okay, that's the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey. And uh, some of the news. synonyms that goes along with pariah uh, or castaway, cast off, a leper, off scouring, O F F S C O U R I N G, an outcast or reject. So these are some of the uh, synonyms that go along with the word pariah. And, uh, have a second Louis Armstrong Family Services New Orleans Talk Network word of the day. And the second word is as follows. Pundit. P-U-N-D-I-T. And pundit simply means a learned person. An expert in a particular subject or field who is frequently called on to give opinions about it to the public, who is frequently called to give opinions about it to the public. Um, a globetrotting financial pundit. That's one of the sentences that relates to the word pundit. Synonyms for pundit or teacher a person who gives opinions in an authoritative manner, usually through the mass media. I'm sorry, that's, that's just a, a paragraph uh, explaining a, a little bit more in depth. Now, the synonyms are as follows. An expert, authority, a specialist, a doyonne, doyonne is French, D-O-Y-E-N dash N-E. A master, 
a guru, a sage, a savant, S-A-V-A-N-T, a maven, M-A-V-E-N. And some of the informal meanings are a buff or whiz. Another, another sentence that relates to pundit is an economic pundit. Pundits are also often regarded as blowhards, mere hacks. Mm -hmm. And you might as well want to take uh, what they say with a pinch of salt. In other words, don't pay no attention to some of these blowhards. Our modern day pundits is a far cry from the original meaning of the word a learned man, a master, or a teacher. And in ancient Hindu, the word pandit, P-A-Y-N-D-I-T. And it was established in the 17th century. So those are just uh, a few uh, synonyms and meanings and quotes uh, relative to the word pundit. Miss Lewis? No, you had a mouthful there. You know, I should not ever say, shut up, Ralph, you talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful. You're sharing all your now, not all of it. I know you're not going to give us all of it, but uh, some knowledge that you have that we definitely enjoy and it is definitely in deed and need. Definitely. Well, uh, as I said before, we have uh, relatives we're still praying for. Oh, yes. Uh, my brother, Alvin Roman, who is has been diagnosed with the uh, full stage cancer. Mm. And uh, he's uh, up and about. He's not bedridden. And uh, he's still uh, trying to enjoy himself. But mm. please pray for him. Pray for those that you know, those who you do not know, because prayers work. They definitely do. Uh, recently, I just lost my best BFF sister, S U S T A, Rose Brazette. And mm. I know she's smiling down on me. You know, she told me, do not. Uh, try not to uh, grieve as much as I did for my mom when my mom passed. Mm -hmm. Cut myself off from the world, and, uh, you know, it was a, a bad experience, still is. However, she said, please keep your head up, go out, have fun, you know, do the things we used to do together to enjoy ourselves, and pray for those who are struggling with that monster mm -hmm. cancer. You know, uh, cancer um, is a horrible, horrible thing. And you never heard of cancer. Huh? Huh? When oh. we was coming up. Mm -mm. Huh? Not at all. And so you can tell that's a man-made mm -hmm. huh? disease. Mm -hmm. Disease, uh, and broke them down in syllables as D-I-S, dis, huh? Mm -hmm. Ease. Mm -hmm. So you're being dissed of your ease. Right. Ease of life. Of life. Yes. It's horrible. Oh, horrible. boy. And please keep praying for my very, very good friend, Dwight Deal. He was a guest on the show uh, several months ago. However, he's in his uh, full stage right now. He's in hospice. Dwight Deal uh, was uh, uh, one of the police officers that you would be proud to know. Mm -hmm. uh, he treated everyone like a sister brother. He did not misuse or abuse anyone. He has a, a great disdain for police officers that go out there and act like they're better than you and mistreat people. And he's been in many controversies of uh, other police with other police officers that actually uh, <coughs> did not do what we need them to do. You know, protect and serve, that is. You know, protect and serve was on the back burner. And he definitely was a protector and a server, a very generous Happy, easygoing, you know, happy-go-lucky type of person that uh, had parties, especially his, his uh, parties that he had in October. And he uh, was a friend indeed. He's one of the best men that I know. And I don't know too many, Ralph, <laughs> because he's, uh, he's genuine, you know, in other words. Mm -hmm. He's very genuine. What you see is what you get. And uh, if anyone listening out there, please, if you have his number, please give him a call. He cannot hold the phone or answer the phone, but his sister has his phone, and she will definitely tell him who called and who didn't call, who asked about him. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to make a run I'm on the West Bank over there to see the white deal. So if you're listening, please pray for him and others, your relatives, people you know, and people you do not know, mm -hmm. because you never know. You never know. 
Mr. Gavin? Well, uh, previously in our conversation, mm -hmm. you uh, made reference to me being knowledgeable. Yes. I'm not that knowledgeable. Yes, you are. You know, there's an old African proverb, and it goes like this. Kojito itu sum. Kojito itu sum. Uh -huh. You know what that means? No, huh? I'm afraid not. You might know. I might know. I think, therefore, I am. Okay, huh? I've heard that. Kojito itu sum. Mm -hmm. So that's about me. It's about yeah. me. Because I think, and therefore, I, I am. am. That's right. It's really true. true. Oh, Lord. Very much so. Very much so. You know, going back to Treme, I, I think about, uh, you know, I've mentioned before that we were raised right next door to each other, 1015 and 1017 mm -hmm. St. Claude Street, is, which is now Henry DeLille. It's still in Treme. Yes. But Treme is definitely not the same as it was before. You know, uh, we have a lot of people from all over. As uh, so living there and want to take charge mm -hmm. and uh, lodging in charge, you know, because they have the big bucks. But uh, we're still standing, you know, mm -hmm. we'll forever be Treme. Hey, 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 what I say. Well, ur uh, urban uh, renewal, gentrification, mm -hmm. you see, all those government names and things and programs that are taking place to uproot. Us. And displace <laughs> black folks. Us. Huh? Yes. To yes. leave us roaming, just like the so-called political sanctions they use in these countries. You got hundreds of millions of people and millions of people, or hundreds of thousands of people just roaming the desert. Oh, yes. Because they've been uh, 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 extracted from their natural homeland. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. But the ones who caused the con political chaos in the murderous confusion around the world, they're still sitting in their castles, huh? in their palaces, and a political sanction don't affect them. Mm. It, it affects the poor and the innocent. Wow. See, they are the people that's roaming to death, roaming the desert, starving to death. Mm. Huh? They are the people that don't have water to drink, and their babies and their grandparents and their mothers and fathers and brothers are dying. Mm. That's what a political sanction do. Mm. Huh? See? So Putin, whatever they say, uh, Trump said he's going to do against Putin, don't care about that. Mm -hmm. huh? Kim Jong-un, huh? that cabbage patch Korean uh, boy over there, mm -hmm. yeah, he don't care. <laughs> Huh? Not a bit. He's still shooting missiles up in the air. I know, that's right. Don't give a damn about what they say they're going to do him. Firecrackers. Yeah. <laughs> that's huh? all it is to him, a little firecracker. Yeah, that Korean cabbage patch baby. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Huh? Wow. Yeah. I am so glad that I have an opportunity today to share it with you. Uh, this little hour went quick. Went by like about five minutes of time, but wow. uh, it was an entire hour. And I'm happy to be here at New Orleans Talk Network with Mr. Ralph Gavin. And I am Linda Lewis with Lewis on Strong Family Services. It was a wonderful show, and I am so glad to share it with you. Mr. Gavin? Ditto. So you good folks out there, you do the research, gain the knowledge, and walk tall. Because those are your weapons against ignorance. Y'all have a great day. See you next time, same time, same station, and I NOTM. Think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue.